Good morning. I'm Anna Marie De La Vega, and this is Focus. If someone were to ask you, who is your favorite member of the family? You might say your pet, your four-legged kid, your fur baby, your little snuggle buddy, your dog or your cat. They love you unconditionally. That's the little smiling face you see every time you come home. But today we're going to talk to someone about ways we might step up and do a little bit better for our fur babies and our four-legged members of the family. We're talking with Brandon Dice with Pet Community Center. Welcome. Hey, Anna Marie. Thank you so much for having me. Got a big, bright smile. You're happy to talk about this subject, aren't you? I get to spend every day with dogs and cats, so how could I not be happy? Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so um, what does Pet Community Center do? It's a nonprofit. Yes, Pet Community Center. We are Nashville's only nonprofit vet center. And we specialize in preventive care and outreach services for dogs and cats in our community. And preventive care meaning? Vaccinations, microchips, monthly prevention. So any of those services that if you have a pet and take them to a groomer or board them, those core vaccinations or services that they would need for those types of activities. Okay. And also low-cost spay and neuter services? High volume spay neuter, yes. And all of our services are on a sliding scale so that financial hardship or ability to pay does not affect anyone's ability to provide pet care for their for their pets. Because I know um, some people who are unhoused and they have pets and those pets are like their lifeline. They have to have those pets. But of course, they probably are not going to have the money to take the the animal, their little, you know, precious dog to the vet to get him spayed, uh, get him neutered or her spayed, so they can come in. Correct. All our services are by appointment, Mm -hmm. but yes, but we welcome anyone in our community to book an appointment at our clinic. Mm -hmm. Um, Our our focus is on making sure that people who want to enjoy the love of the pet can have that, and so that they can have that healthy, happy bond with their pet. Why is it important to spay or neuter your pets, other than the extra kittens and puppies that we just don't have the the resources for. Yeah, well, that's a big one, and I would love to come back to that. Well, but, that one, yes. yeah. but first and foremost, um, spay and neuter actually is very healthy for a pet. It reduces the risk of certain cancers, certain diseases, and then also if you have indoor-outdoor pets, it also decreases their likelihood to roam in search of love. Oh, my goodness. That's right. I remember that with like uh, male cats, for example. Correct. Yeah, yeah. they're not going to go out and across the neighborhood looking for girlfriends. Exactly. So it keeps them healthier and ideally it keeps them at home, mm-hmm. which is where we want them. Well, because some animals are territorial. Cats are territorial. Sure. And, and they'll in, get in fights. Absolutely. And then in cats, it can help decrease the propensity of cat, of cat fights and, and those sorts of behaviors. And injuries. Yeah. So... Spay neuter basically creates healthier pets and healthier communities. The next big, big, big reason to get your animals, your dog and cat spayed and neutered would be because of the population. Anyone who is familiar with animal welfare knows that our shelters and rescues are in crisis. There are simply more animals than there are homes. And that's not just here in Nashville. I would say that that's nationwide. Mm -hmm. So what happens when the shelters are in crisis? Shelters and rescues are facing difficult choices every day, you know, Mm -hmm. for people needing, um, for pets needing emergency services. So they do an amazing job of working with families, working with pets who are in our community that, that that need help. But where Pet Community Center comes in and where we can make a difference is by being a proactive solution to that. So if we can make spay neuter more available to people in our community, to families, Mm -hmm. then that is going to prevent the problem before it occurs. Yes, to prevent the overcrowding and the overflow and the needless euthanasias and things like that. Correct. It absolutely helps with control, humanely control the pet population. Mm -hmm. So one thing, you know, one stat that we use at Pet Community Center is one unspayed or neutered dog or cat can reproduce, have five unwanted puppies or kittens. So on an average day, we'll spay and neuter 35 dogs and cats. So if you multiply 35 by five, that's what, 165. So every day that's 165 unwanted puppies and kittens that are being prevented or have the potential to be prevented from being born. And then they're... Dogs and cats, their puppies and kittens. 
Absolutely. It, it's exponential. And I think that's one thing that people don't stop to think about is, you know, a four month old kitten can have four to five kittens. No. And then they can re- reproduce every four months. So just think of a four month old kitten has five kittens and then four months later, well, then there's six kittens that are going to produce six times five. So 30. Oh. So within an eight month time span. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? I so, don't even know. I can't I can't add that. High. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's exponential. So, you know, it, it's just it's so important for people to understand the value of spay neuter and not just for the health of their own pets, but for the impact that, it, again, that it has for creating healthier communities, because that means fewer outdoor cats. That means fewer unwanted pets. That mm-hmm. means fewer pets needing to be rehomed because we are humanely controlling a problem or providing a, a solution to a challenge before it exists. And you provide the services at Pet Community Center. You provide these services for whom? So we are open to the general public. So anyone is welcome to book an appointment at Pet Community Center. Um, so and then again, all our services are on a sliding scale. So we always say we love people who can come in and pay full, full, full. Uh, our services are on a sliding scale. Mm-hmm. So anyone is welcome to come in. They're all, you know, our vaccines and our surgeries are affordable. But even those who can pay full price generally just means chances are you're going to be covering the cost of services for the person in line behind you who may need a little help providing that veterinary care for their pet. If I chose to go to Pet Community Center rather than my vet to get the vaccines for my dog and I pay full price, yeah. I could do that. You absolutely could do that. And that would help support you. It would. So all uh-huh. our vaccines are $15. So we provide four, the four core vaccinations for dogs and cats as well as microchips. And then you can also get your monthly prevention through us as well. So your flea and tick and your heartworm prevention, we have an online pharmacy. And so you can order that through us as well. So would I need a prescription from another vet or can I come to Pet Community Center and they can prescribe that and take care of that for my animals? Yes, if you came in for services. So our vet, you would have the opportunity to purchase any products that we have. If there is a product that you like for monthly prevention for your pet that we don't stock, Mm -hmm. our vets can write you a prescription so that you could go online to Chewy or whatever online pharmacy that you would want to go to and and purchase that, that prescription for your pet. I love the fact that that would be helping people like I can pay for the vaccines and that sort of thing. But to know if I got them through Pet Community Center, I would be helping other people and helping support your cause. Yes. So when folks come in, you know, they are making veterinary care possible for every member of our community. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who have disabilities, who have limited incomes. Yes. uh, Who might not even be able to get out of the house to go get their animals spayed or neutered. What what about them? So, you know, we are focused on those inequities that exist in animal welfare. So we have a program that's called Pets for Life, and it's through the Humane Society of the United States. That's in specific neighborhoods in North and East Nashville. But our Pets for Life coordinator, her job is to be canvassing in those communities. So what? she. Yeah. So she goes out and she knocks on doors and introduces Pet Community Center to uh, residents living there. And do you have pets? Would you like to learn about Pets for Life? And a lot of those folks, they live in under-resourced areas of our city. So and transportation can be a barrier for them. So we have a transport van. And so every Wednesday, Shelly, who is our PFL coordinator, Uh, She will go out and she schedules transports with those clients. And so that can either be coming in for a spay-neuter surgery or bringing those pets in for their annual vaccinations. That is wonderful. It's pretty cool. Yay, Pet Community Center. (laughs) I'm so excited about that because that is a big barrier. People don't think about it very much. You take it for granted that if I need to get this, then I'll go there. But if you don't have good transportation, any transportation. Exactly right. I mean, you know resources are only great if you can get to those resources. Yeah. So, you know, so a lot of times that there are opportunities for folks to have access to services, but if they don't have transportation or if those services are offered at a time when they generally work and maybe they can't leave, you know, they can't take off PTO to go to the vet. So paid time off. Right. So, 
So our Pets for Life program, you know, makes that possible for families in these communities to to have that access. Is it access at a different time of day or something? No, it's just that because we offer that service, that transportation oh. service, Shelly can coordinate with them on the day and the time that's best for them. Oh. And then she can make sure that their pets are brought to the clinic and get the get their annual vaccinations or the care that they deserve. If you're just joining us, I'm Anna Marie, and this is Focus. It's a closer look at people, places, and things right here in our own community. This is a fabulous resource, and this is a fabulous group. Pet Community Center, Brandon Dice, is here to tell us about this nonprofit. And you've already told us that Pet Community Center offers spay-neuter services, including low-cost, on a sliding scale, spay-neuter services, right? vaccinations. Yes, Uh, monthly flea tick heartworm kind of things. Yes, you can order those at our clinic as well if your pet's a client. And outreach services. Yes, so we have our Pets for Life program, which is through the Humane Society of the United States. And those zip codes are 37207, 37208, and 37218. Again, those are East and North Nashville. Okay. And HSUS identified those. So they did a study when we uh, were applied for our Pets for Life program, HSUS. This is a national model that they have Mm -hmm. um, across the United States. And so they come into the city and then they look at data that is available to identify where in the city are their veterinary deserts. So where are folks living that have, maybe there's no vet within, you know, a 20 mile radius, even there's not even a Walmart or a dollar store or a convenience store that even sells pet food or resources that people that people would need just to care for their pets. And so that's how those um, three zip codes were identified. And what is the HSUS? Humane Society of the United States. Oh, okay. HSUS, yeah. Humane Society yeah. of the United States. So they figure this out and, and like you're like, okay, here's where we're going to go. Exactly. And then it's a model that they have nationwide. And so they train us on that. We meet with them biweekly. So they coach us, you know, on how to most effectively run the program. But the, but the, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about being out and being present in these communities, in these neighborhoods, and building that trust with folks to let them know that if you need a resource for your pet, we can be that resource for you. And there aren't barriers that exist that, oh, yes, you can have access to spay-neuter or to vaccinations if you can get to the clinic. If transportation is a barrier, we'll get there. You know, we we can provide that for you. And if cost is an issue, you could help take care of that. Correct. I bet a lot of people who have a visit from, what did you say? Her name is Shelly? Shelly. Shelly knocks on the door and says, hey, let me tell you about this great program through Pet Community Center where we can help you get transportation to get your animal taken care of, your dog or your cat taken care of. I bet they're picking up the phone immediately and (laughs) telling somebody about it. It is. It's it's a popular program, and we're very proud of it. I mean, I think already this year we've added probably 120 new pets to the program. Mm -hmm. And so every year I would say we serve anywhere probably from five to 700 pets in those zip codes through our Pets for Life program. That would not have gotten the care that they needed. Absolutely. Or it would have been much harder potentially for their for their pet parents to get that care for them. Oh, their pet parents. I love that you call them that. (laughs) So how did Pet Community Center begin? What was was it one person and this driving desire to do something or what, what happened there, Brandon? There were a group of animal lovers yeah. and they realized that there was a problem in our community with the amount of intake and euthanasia that was happening at uh, our city shelter at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was back in early 2000s. So this was an effort by a grassroots uh group of animal lovers who got together and wanted to make change in our community. Um, Basically, we had very high rates of intake and euthanasia at our municipal shelter at the time. Mm -hmm. So they started Pet Community Center. So in its original days, they were trapping cats. It It was all around outdoor cats. So they were trapping cats and transporting them to area spay neuter clinics and then they realized the demand was so great that Davidson County needed a clinic all its own. Goodness. So we opened up in 2015 um, our own clinic and we used to be over on Trinity Lane mm-hmm. in East Nashville. 
Um, and then from there, it just grew. We added the vaccine clinic uh, to, to our services, as well as the Pets for Life program. Uh, we also, we have Davidson County's Community Cat Program. So what today, is that? <laughs> so community cats are outdoor cats. So um, I know we've all seen them in our neighborhoods. Yes. Yeah. So uh, they're not homeless cats. They're outdoor cats. Yeah. Um, so well, porch kitties. And stuff. <laughs> exactly. Um, but what we do is we have a partnership with um, Metro Animal Care and Control. So so when it comes to community cats, any resident in Davidson County can reach out to us. We can loan them a trap. We can help them trap that cat and then bring it to our clinic. And then uh, the community cat package, which is for spay neuter and ear tip, which is the universal sign for how you know uh, an outdoor cat has been spayed or neutered, and then updated on their vaccinations uh, for $30 or pay what you can. Again, oh, a sliding scale. That's amazing. Now, I want you to please focus on the ear tip because I remember someone said that they had seen a cat. And they said they didn't know what the ear tip was. They said it's lost part of its ear. And I was like, no. If it's the left ear, the little bitty tip will be gone. And so that means that cat more than likely has been to Pet Community Center and has been spayed or neutered and vaccinated. Goodness, that's fabulous. Yeah, it's funny. I just actually uh, went on a trip to Spain back in April and ran across some community cats. And lo and behold, they had an ear tip. It's a universal symbol. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, so I was like, oh, there's outdoor cats. I hope they're okay. And then I saw their ear tip and I was like, they're just fine. Oh, that's great. <laughs> what can members of the general public do if I don't need to have my pets spayed or neutered? Uh, first of all, maybe get the vaccines through you guys to help pay for someone else's as well. What else can I do to support Pet Community Center? What do you need? Volunteers are great. We have about 70 dogs and cats every day in our clinic. So that's a lot of laundry, a lot of traffic, a lot of sweeping, yeah. a lot of we have to clean all those surgical instruments. And, you know, so anybody has time during the day would love to volunteer. We would love to do that. Then also we need volunteers for our community cat program. So we work with a lot of folks who want to um, TNR the cats in their neighborhood, which but is trap, neuter, return. Okay, So that's sort of the. Industry lingo, if you will. That's TNR right. is trap, neuter, return. So Thank you, you trap for... it, neuter it, return it right back to where it came from. Appreciate that education. Yeah, to its home. But um, we always need volunteer trappers who oh. might be able to help us go out in the community, set traps, transport those cats back to the clinic so mm -hmm. that we can provide those services and then take them back to their outdoor home. Because that just basically takes a body. It takes manpower. It does. And, you know, going back to... Issues of access and mobility. A lot of the folks that we see reach out to us that that would love to have help, you know, with the community cats in their neighborhood. Maybe they can't trap on a regular basis because of work or maybe they have mobility or transportation issues themselves. So when we have volunteers who can go out, we call them projects who can go out on a trapping project and help be a resource in those areas. It just means that we're more successful at being able to trap that colony, the cats in that colony that come to our uh, clinic um, and take them back. So in theory, before long, you could have things kind of under control in that community, in that neighborhood. Right. One thing that's unique about our community cat program is that we, again, schedule what we call projects. So if you, Anna Marie, say you reach out to us and you say that you have 10 cats living under your shed. Mm -hmm. What we would want to do is schedule you to bring all 10 of those cats at one time. Because if we do them one off, they could, again, every four months, there's potential for, for, for more kittens. Yes. So if we can take a targeted approach and if we can get all 10 of those cats or as many of those cats as we can at one time and bring them in, that basically caps that colony off. Now they're healthy. They're spayed and neutered. We don't have to worry about more kittens appearing and then they're vaccinated. So it really helps. It's a more strategic approach to controlling um, outdoor cat populations. If you've controlled the population, would you say capped the colony? Is it called a colony sure, of a cats? a cat colony, yeah. A cat colony. Yeah, if, cat colonies. If you've capped that population, they have enough resources for them all. 
Correct. Possibly. Right. Generally, you will find outdoor cats living in an area because there is an ecosystem there that supports that. They have access to shelter, to food, to water. And many times what I've learned in my time at Pet Community Center, I've been there almost two years, is that a lot of times these colonies or these outdoor cats have what we call a caretaker. So there's someone who lives nearby. Again, these could be cats living on their property or either their residential property or even sometimes their commercial property. And so, and they, they want to live harmoniously with these cats. And so they will take care of them. They know them. They know how many are there. They, they will provide food for them. They will, if they're sick or injured, we do, we can see sick or injured um, community cats at our clinic. That is the service we provide. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, You know, we're not full service, so we are limited, but we can generally sometimes at least offer help. So, again, what we found is most colonies have a caretaker and that there are people out there that love these cats and care for them and watch it and watch out for them. You know, you wouldn't necessarily call them their pet because they're sometimes feral, but they're outdoor cats. But they they live in an environment where they a sustainable environment. They're living in a sustainable environment. And you called it an ecosystem or something? That's, that's my word. That's I just say beautiful. there, yeah, there's an ecosystem there that supports them, right? So there's food, water, shelter, generally someone that is kind of a caretaker who is, who is watching out for them. And then Pet Community Center helps to ensure that it doesn't become an unmanageable colony. And especially like for an elderly person, because the elderly person may pass on or the caretaker may move. Right. And then the colony still has to kind of rejigger themselves. Yeah, exist. Right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, you know, where we say that Pet Community Center, you know, where we're focused on is we want to protect the health of pets. We want to prevent animal overpopulation and we want to provide for pets in need. What else? Besides volunteers, you want some money? Should we be well, trying to make well, donations? I mean, uh, can we? Can we ask for that on the <laughs> air, Anna Marie? Sure you can. Yeah. Sure you can. Obviously, I mean, you know, again, a lot of this is possible because of the generosity of our community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the animal welfare world here in Davidson County, you know, what Pet Community Center does is sort of stand alone in that we are providing that preventative piece to animal welfare. Not to say that, again, what our shelters and rescues are doing incredible work and they're doing very hard work. But, you know, once the animal, once a dog or cat has gone homeless or any other pet is homeless, you know, that's where the shelters are stepping in and taking, you know, swinging for the fences to help save those lives. What we're trying to do is make sure that it never even gets there. Like in, in a perfect world for us, that dog or cat doesn't even arrive at the shelter. I feel like people at the pet shelters and humane associations and things like that, I, I feel like they're probably very grateful for what Pet Community Center does. Do you guys ever get to talk to them? We, we do, actually. Uh, I meet monthly with uh, the director of Nashville Humane Association and Metro Animal Care and Control and Crossroads Campus, where it's a tight-knit community. And we do work very closely together because... You know, it, it takes everybody doing their part. And we want to make sure, you know, that families, that pets, that people in our community have access to the resources they need. What Mac can provide is unique and stand alone to them. What National Humane Association can provide is unique and stand alone to them. Same thing for Pet Community Center. So if we make sure that we're staying in close communication with each other, it just means that we can make a bigger difference for pets and people here in our community. Because, I mean, ultimately, what we want to see is an end to pet, you know, pet homelessness. You said that shelters are, quote, in crisis. Yes. Because they have more pets coming in than they can handle. And then they can adopt out. Then they can spay and neuter and get taken care of. Is it worse than ever before? Is it getting better? Is it continuing to to worsen at this point? Do you know? It's hard to tell. And again, as COVID did, it really put a pinch on a lot of things, right? You know, um, when that happened, vet clinics were not an essential service. So, you know, and then... There were also proximity. You couldn't be stand closer. Everyone had to stand six feet apart, right? So how do you do surgery on an animal when you can't have people more than six feet apart? So, you know, COVID really 
COVID really set us back, you mm-hmm. know, certain shelters and rescues, you know, it, it had mm-hmm. a negative effect on their operations on being able to be open. So, wow, you know, so COVID again, really set us back. Um, but I, it feels like, you know, again, if we can work together, if we can all kind of, you know, stay lock arms together and say, here's the resources that our agency can bring to the table. And this is how we can support the community. And this is what we can do for pets and families. That's where we try to say, if we can have those kinds of conversations, we can hopefully get through this a lot faster and a lot more effectively and ultimately save a lot more lives. Have you learned anything from your meetings with like the National Humane Association and the uh, Metro Action Care and Control. Have you learned anything? You were like, that's surprising to me. When we have these meetings, I think what we've discovered is it helps us understand where we individually can deploy our resources oh. to have a bigger impact for one another to better serve the community. For instance, we get max intake report every month, which is by zip code in Davidson County. To show how many animals have been taken in. Exactly, by, from each zip code here in Davidson County. So what we can do is then we can take that and look and see how does that correlate to the appointments that we're booking? Or does that tell us, is there a certain part of Davidson County where potentially we could refocus our efforts? If we see that, you know, maybe sh- there's a higher rate of stray intake in our Pets for Life service area. Is there something then we can set down with our Pets for Life team and say, is it animals are, you know, is it, you know, is it a spay neuter issue? Is it these are pets that live outside? And so we need to work with their families to make sure, you know, that they have proper resources to keep them at home. So it just these meetings help us really know the challenges that are out there and look at them more holistically for our city. And then again, really feel then walk away from that. What can Mac do? What can NHA do? What can Pet Community Center do today to hopefully make a difference tomorrow? Is there anything else that you would like to add that you feel it's important that our listeners know? I think we all realize how special our pets are to us. And so I think it's important to know that everyone should have that right, that pet ownership shouldn't be a privilege for those with privilege, that it should be something available to everyone. So if we can find ways to break down those barriers, veterinary care, if you have a pet, you know, it's expensive. So if we can find a way to make preventive care more accessible for pet owners in our community, regardless of their financial situation, then we know that we can empower people to have that happy, healthy relationship with their dog or cat. That's fantastic. Can I say again, yay, Pet Community Center. (laughs) We really appreciate what you do in our community. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you so much, Anna Marie. We appreciate being here. We'll put some information and some links on our Focus Facebook page, Brandon Dice with Pet Community Center. You're going to want to check it out online as well. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure you're with us again next week. I'm Anna Marie, and that's Focus.